Hey gang, this is Fillmore, just letting you know that if you enjoy our podcast, quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast, and you'd like to donate some money for the upkeep, uh, or you want to request certain clips, please donate to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash jimfix. That's J-I-M-F-I-X-X. You can donate as much as you want for as long as you want. There's absolutely no obligation. First of all, the nerve of your fucking ass to call me and tell me your fucking problem. It's not my... Fuck off. Get lost. Get off. Take your stupid subscription and cancel. Who cares, Dina? Fuck you. Fuck you, cunt. Fuck you. Do your audience a favor. Get lost. Don't do my audience. I'll do my audience whatever I want. I'll piss on this audience if I... Douche. I do have uh, issues about people leaving me. I want to control everyone in my atmosphere. I want... I am a puppet master. And I want everyone to be a puppet. He was saying goodbye to me, and he leaned in for a kiss, and I smiled so big that he literally kissed my teeth. Um, I cheated on every one of my boyfriends except for Howard. For real? Mm-hmm. The really? day I met Howard, my cheating days ended. You were a cheater? I was a cheater. I hate Beth. I think she's only after Howard's money, and she's, <laughs> and she's a real horse face. Can you bang any of those stripper broads on the, uh, on the show? Teresa Lynn said you banged up. Teresa who? Ooh, she was on here. Finally, she told she was in your movie, thing. Private Parts. <laughs> oh, Amy. One of the, uh, no, no, no. Teresa, the, the one with the, oh, one no, the no, little ass. The she, she never said that. She told That's me. That's a lie. Uh, to admit you're lying. Uh, That's Tony. She called Tony. Did I ever bang Teresa Lynn? Take in New Jersey. Welcome to the wrap-up Which, show. Does any of you gentlemen believe that Beth actually loves Howard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's cut right to the nitty-gritty. <laughs> Artie and I spent last weekend with him, and if she's in love, then she should get a fucking Oscar. Right. She's not in love. If she's, I mean, <laughs> she's in love, she should get an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Friday and Slim. <laughs> See? Uh-oh, here comes Beth. Howard is Beth. Howard is Beth. I'm knitting baby buddies. <laughs> what are you doing, Beth? Uh, I'm knitting baby buddies. I could just see our blonde, our blonde curly haired son. At least you don't have to pretend your dog is actually a child. <laughs> Beth once even said to me, it was funny too, because Beth once said to me, you know, I wouldn't mind being engaged forever. Like, like this was, you know, years ago. She was, I just think the ring is so great. I would uh-huh. love to, you know, it's romantic. And, and it's romantic yeah. and it's kind of cool. But the second. I uh, popped the question. She was like, well, let's get on the phone and tell everyone we're getting married. I went, whoa, whoa. Yeah. no, 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 we're not getting married. We're engaged. <laughs> There's no such thing. You know what it is? I'm so self-important. I just don't even remember meeting anyone. She was up here one day and I introduced you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I'm, cured. I'm not going to be cured of any. I am me. I am just going to psychiatrist so that I can feel better about certain issues in my life. That's all. You're listening to, quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast, and this is the official low-rent, half-assed intro for NPD4, It's All About Him, Ed, Part 2, which is Episode 34, officially. Just wanted to explain to everybody, and our fans especially, that um, what happened was the Episode 33 which was released on August 24th, was already over long, so we decided to divvy it up into a second session. That second session was so long that we are ending up with a third session, which you will hear, that would be officially NPD4 Part 3, will come after our next video walkthrough, the first part of which will happen next week. So you're going to have to wait a few weeks for the finale of the NPD4 breakdown but we and we also have other episodes in store that we're going to be recording as well just to keep you guys informed of why it seems uh, truncated at the end of this episode and why you think you're missing it or we fucked up no it's deliberate because we wanted to also break up the npd format a little bit while we were doing other stuff so i hope you enjoy it and we'll see you soon which is ironic because years earlier there was that clip where they asked him like okay make us angry with one sentence he claimed he could and he got, he went out, he said, Gary cheats already, you know, Dana's only with you cause you're on the show. Uh, you know, so-and-so Fred, you would have been nowhere without me. And I mean, <laughs> some of these things are true, but, um, but it, irrelevant. Cause he said, you can't do it to me. And Bowie tried, but you know, he really couldn't. So, uh, already could, he just wasn't going to do it. Then he had to wait years later to get the fucking realization that no, maybe he needs this sometimes this shithead. Uh, anyway, that's a whole other, we'll go on to that.
I don't believe well, that I look, need this. Howard, this is, uh, I w I'm sitting here biting my tongue. Why? Don't bite. Now's your chance. Did you fight in your first marriage? No. All right. We see where that ended. Well, that's true. <laughs> my, feelings, my feelings Honey, are going to nervous. My feelings are going to blue carpet. Wait, that's it, really mad. Yeah, you, go. you didn't fight in your first marriage no, at all. I never fought with Allison. How yeah, would how did she, she know that? How well, that's would she, did she know that's, that? That's what she. That's what they ask. Like Ablo does ask that. Not no. Uh, and again, I am not she a knows, troublemaker. Uh, I do know that, but no, but you know, she doesn't. The other thing I've noticed is you're. No, she doesn't. There's no, she, she, she doesn't know. Well, first of all, she, he probably didn't say much about Allison to begin with to her. And she wasn't a fan of the show. So she wouldn't have known mm -hmm. we played clips of them fucking arguing <laughs> as if they didn't argue, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. so anyway, let's continue. So gifted that, <laughs> that you could, Who could fight with me. You could even extinguish. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the point. You refine an armamentarium of verbal abilities that allow you to extinguish anyone's objections. I don't like it when you got that uh, <gasps> massage from that man <laughs> and you didn't tell me about it. Go ahead, Sam. Bob, when he says that, when Keith Ablo says that to him, he's not talking about like gifts. He's saying you have this ability that no one can argue with you. And Artie's laughing and saying, yeah, who could argue with you in jest because he knows, too, that he has this ability to, no matter what the hell you say, you're losing. Yeah, make you punch drunk. Plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying there. You are able to abuse and do what you want to do because you you always make sure that you have this armor of plausible deniability. So no matter what happens, you can back out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Two years ago. Well, I, I slammed the door. That. I shut I the door so on him. I so perfect for him. I knew nothing wrong. Remember Michael oh. Corleone in The oh. Godfather when he shut... So she just said, like, when it, but the massage he got from a guy, she said that was two years ago. So, again, something that bothered him from ages ago that's still bothering him and never stopped bothering him, and he's bringing it up. As you said, Bob, they store it away like fucking, like, uh, like ammo for a rainy day. Never goes away. Yeah. Ever. And then she goes, and she just did that. You just heard her say, I'm so perfect. I do nothing wrong. Yeah, well, I just feel apparently like he, did. He holds on to stuff from his dad from when he was 11. <laughs> Supposedly. Yeah, exactly. He's Suppos still whatever, talking about whatever high school. Whatever his mind happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Let me, exactly. Let me, with whatever he interpreted happened, he's still holding. A 71-year-old guy still holding on to something when you were 11? <laughs> I mean, I I let stuff go from this last weekend. Like it just... Some people have a hard time letting go. Uh, Sam, you were going to say... <laughs> you were saying I mean, we're... like, who has a memory that goes... It's incredible how he holds on to things. He still gets mad about even fake narratives he's made up from high school. Oh, yes. He's insane. Yeah. They never so, let it I... go. Never. It's Shut very interesting. Did you hear what she? You heard it. What she did she said, say? I am so perfect for him. I do nothing wrong. Right. You can do something wrong. <laughs> yeah, but you saying that doesn't make it so because it's bundled with you being Howard Stern. That's why she needs therapy because uh, she can do something <laughs> wrong. She doesn't have to feel. So like it's she your can fault. Do it's your fault. You need it's... therapy for my megalomania. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo must have like I knew he knew the show, but going and listening to this, he must have been like, "Wow, I could release seasons of television based on these two Nimrods." Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm now, where does that come from? That. Also, that comes from somewhere. Where did you get the idea that to be perfect means? I just mean for him. I don't cause him any stress. Oh boy, he's asking a good question. Uh, but I don't have an answer. I don't. I just know that I'm perfect for you. But why do you have to be perfect? That's a good question. He's like my. I don't feel that the pressure that I have pressure to be perfect for him. Not that I'm perfect. I don't feel the pressure that I have to be perfect for him. I just in in experiencing our lives together. Right. I <laughs> hold on. Feel oh. I am perfect for him. I I like to go to bed early. I'm sorry. I had to cut that one up. But basically, I I, I love that clip. The uh, mm. I I feel I have to be perfect. Why do you feel I have to be perfect? I don't feel it. I mean, so she's going back on it. The answer is she knows she has to, she has boundaries. She cannot overstep. And when she does, there are consequences that will never be uh, fully 
um, realized because they'll always be at, at her. Like he'll always be nipping at her. You know, he's like, he really, that mosquito analogy was really good. He's always going to be fucking like on her about something. doesn't matter and, how long it and gets. And Abelo knows that. He's like, yeah. so where does that come from? Where'd you get that idea? He knows where she yeah. got it from. Absolutely. And he's like, so where does that come from? And it's because this is the agreement. You be my perfect wife. Mm-hmm. And you can't do anything wrong. And this is the agreement. And I'm giving you all. And yeah, I mean, and Howard knows that that's it's like a, they have all these unspoken agreements and he knows it. He's just seeing his false illusion just evaporate right now. And he thought it was going to go the other way. But does he know that Ablo knows it all? I think he does. I think he knows that. All my ideas of this relationship that I came on here and I thought were going to be reinforced, but he actually knew the truth the whole time. He's Mm -hmm. just saying, I am pressuring her to be perfect. He knows it. Mm -hmm. I am doing this. I am bullying her. I am controlling her. That's why he's the first. If you notice, Howard's the first one to say it Mm and all these things. She doesn't even say it. He says it. That's right. But do you see how she's short circuiting right here where yeah, she's like, she freaked out. I, 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 I don't feel the need to be no, but I, I, I live our life together. So, and it's like this, uh, do you feel like Keith, once she responds this way, do you think he knows, oh my God. I am in more than I realized, or yeah, do you think I, that I do? I do. Okay. Yeah. He 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 had to know there was he, he was going to get something out of them. He just there's no way he had no he had no way of knowing that it was going to be this much and this vast and this deep. But uh yeah. and he's like, "Wow, I nailed a fucking beluga." <laughs> I think he tries to do <laughs> Yeah, what do you think control? he's thinking? I think he tries to do quality control. And you yeah. see it as it starts to go on cuz I think he's like, "Holy fuck, I just uncovered like a horrific abusive relationship." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. So he tries to start spinning it, and then Howard starts digging himself in even deeper. Yeah, it's a perfect. It's a perfect sort of um, a circular saw of 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 cringe. Stay with you, yeah. right? Some once or twice a month, month I get invited to go somewhere great, whether it's a fashion um, event, and I go, and I and I sense that he does not like that, and I ninety nine point nine percent of the time. I'm home in bed with him. I feel I would be less perfect if I was a normal 34-year-old woman going out like my friends do more often. And I choose not to. I know but I'm okay with that. But Okay, so she has to like... Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Before she says, I'm okay with that, you can tell. Because Beth, unrehearsed, rarely has anything with such a flow to say. It's mm-hmm. always pre preempted. She has thought about, I am not a 34 normal person that right. goes out. I don't do these things with my friends. You can tell that this is something in her head that she has thought about, that oh, my yeah. friends go out, real. that I don't go out, that I don't do these things. Mm-hmm. That's because real. that came out very seamlessly. So you know that has been an argument or a complaint right. in her head mm-hmm. or with her friends. And we'll actually uh, illustrate that point later on with another clip if we get to it um, about her going to her high school reunion. And he, she said uh, she, she didn't want him to go. And uh, it's, it's two things. She doesn't want him to go because who would want to parade this fucking vulture uh, to your high school? Like no matter how much money he has. And then second of all, she knows he's going to be a miserable prick. So why fucking bring him anyway? And yeah. thirdly, um, it's like... Um, it's, you know, she really wants to be the attention on her at that point. Cause it's about 2010 and she's like, well, no, I was the prom queen. He wasn't around. So what's the point of having him here? It's all about me. It's all about me, Ed, actually this time. At those rare times I would that like I to go, go, out go out with my friends too. That's what he, that, that's yeah. what, when I, okay. <laughs> you don't have to this is good. Party, uh, anywhere you want to go with me? But, that's listen, what he does. Listen, that's, I think Keith, that's, that's what he does. I, that's what he, what I'm getting right, out of it is right. I think Beth that's is, what he does. Beth is no, I, very aware that she's perfect for you. And I think she doesn't realize it maybe, but she puts pressure on herself to continue to be honey, perfect. But this do, is do you want to go out at Yes, night? she does. It, she does. Yes. Have I ever once said don't go out? That's not, that's. That you've never not you've never said it's that. It's hard for me. I miss but you. But yet you hold a grudge from the side. Oh, you're leaving me. Yes, I miss you. And then you. he says, 
I'm going to have to make a plan with my friends. Well, I have to threaten and, you, yeah. Um, I, I have to threaten you. <laughs> yeah. I, Once you play this to any one of your friends having marital problems, theirs will seem a lot smaller in comparison. I have to threaten you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. who threatens? Like, it, it, it's just, it's again, they, they always want to have plausible deniability. Did I ever tell you not? It's like, listen, no, you know that you don't have the balls to tell me not to go out. But you know that you're just going to piss all over the house when I'm gone. You're going to hold it against me. You're going to turn this place into a war zone for the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, don't act like it's just nothing if I go out. You know it's something. And he tries to spin it in his own little way. And then, obviously, he gets passive aggressive and his voice cracks. I want to go with my friend. He doesn't want to go out. He doesn't want to do anything. No, he he just doesn't want her. bed at eight. And she's like, I think she's realizing I'm kind of a young woman. Still, and this is kind of abnormal, you know, mm-hmm. even at this age. Yeah. So. Sam? And then she, she is getting more confidence because I think she realizes Keith Abelo realizes he's a yep. fucking Mess. narcissist. Yeah. So yeah. as she said, but then the, see, this is what he does. This is what he does. And she's and getting a little protecting. bit more forceful in her voice, like save me, save me. Here's what he does. Yeah. And it, one of the tactics they say is they punish you with abuse, neglect, abandonment. They withhold yep. love, attention, support, and communication. So yep. she's like, see, see, see. And yep. it's it's actually very scary because I wish yeah. she would have just cut this off. I yeah. don't like Beth as a person. Honestly, I think she's an attention whore. But oh, yeah. I wish she would have just cut him off then. It's not worth it. And well, and, and the fu- she, sure, yeah. protecting, protecting her. So right. I think that's why she's gaining because she's like, this is the first time I've had any protection. Because normally when I'm on here, she's got all the, you know, sycophants, Fred and Robin and Gary and callers. And she's like, I actually have someone in my corner right now. Like, like I'm going to say what I want to say. Well, yeah, she draws strength. She's drawing strength from being there with Ablo. And in fact, she had to sort of weather the storm until they got married. So she, like I said before, so that she could exercise a little more independence after she got the ring, if they were legally married, she never changed her name, but I, you know, it doesn't mean you didn't, she's not legally married. Anyway, let's continue for a bit. I'm going to go out with, I'm going to go out. I'm going out with Ross and Artie. We're going to the strip club. I'm going to scores, but I'm (laughs) laughing. We're laughing the whole time though. It's not. Why are we not being serious? Are you upset when I go to the Nicole Miller fashion show this afternoon? She feels in some amount of peril. I am first of all. If she's serious with you about disagreements. See, I agree with that. She keeps checking with you. She is right. She is, she is right. Yeah. I do have issues about people leaving me. I want to control everyone in my atmosphere. I want, I am a puppet master, and I want everyone to be a puppet. Uh, if I'm going to be in a real relationship with Beth, I, I can't be the puppet master. It's going to be a burden and all of that. And she'll so be angry I, later. So that's right, and no she'll hate me to for be a it. Puppet. That's right. She I don't feel that I am. You're not. I that's... don't think you are, because I believe that I have to struggle with my inability to be alone at night, and that I can't go out. I want to be with, with you. How many eyes could you get in that? <laughs> Five eyes? Okay. <laughs> so... I remember hearing this the first time I said, oh, you want to be the puppet master. You don't want to be the puppet master. It's a burden. It's not a burden. I remember saying that. And now I'm hearing this and I'm hearing this in a way that she, he's saying it's a struggle for him, but he likes this struggle. I can hear that he likes the struggle of, he wants to be the puppet master and he's enjoying that. And she's saying, um, I don't, I don't feel that. So she's playing into the narrative. She's being yep. the good. Oh, it's house, fine. House frau. Yeah, absolutely. I get, I get that he sees this relationship is going the normal trajectory, which is bad. Mm-hmm. And he's realizing <laughs> he's trying to have control on this. I'm going through the same cycle again. She's saying, no, no, this cycle's different. This cycle's different is what I'm getting. I know I already called the, I'm a, I decided to call this uh episode um uh it's all about him Ed but I thought breaking Beth might be a better better title <laughs> with a photoshop as well we'll so see what she, I can do. she's the one that has the issue that feels like she's not an equal or he doesn't treat her as an equal and now it's his burden 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. okay. Yeah, they, let's play the rest of this because it's so telling. You and I also want to be at work. And it's very difficult for me not to have everything. I want to have it all. And I can't. And I have to struggle with that. It's not about Beth. It's about me. She's yes. right. I dated other <laughs> girls. And uh, it's not about Beth. It's about me. In truer Fuck words, you never Facebook. spoke. That that should be the intro to your shows. Yeah. Well, I got that one clipped separately. Actually, that, that it's not about Beth. It's about me. It's, it's never been me. about her. It's never or them. It's about him. It's constantly. And that's he wanted it that way. She decided. Okay. I'll play along. And what happened, as you said, Bob, there's but there's the resentment on his part eventually, but then also mostly on hers because she's trapped, oh, like in a gilded oh. cage. Yeah. No Neil Young shouldn't even be, be able to pet. take a shit without thinking about me. <laughs> no, yeah. No one wants to be a pet. As much as she's saying, I'll be his pet if, you know, X, Y, and Z, I get money. Eventually, the money and all that stuff, like, you're, you're not a human. Like... You're well, dehumanized, so. The, it, just as, an, uh, as a sort of corollary, guys, the uh, Memphis Mafia, the guys that hung around Elvis, they, they're, they're similar sentiments where they got treated very well because Elvis had money, but they, they, he didn't actually pay them a lot of money. Mm. Like, he, he kept, kept them, you know, a bit of a lifestyle, but that was when they were around him, and they had to defer to him all the time. I'm sure Elvis had NPD as well. Uh, I bet because, that's the same thing going on here. I think that's a great parallel. Yeah, and uh, people that have done the reading, because I'm well-versed. By the way. Did I? Yeah, you have brought that up before with uh, him and the colonel and stuff. With Don it was Buckwald. An, it, and... it's, a, it's a very interesting parallel because um, Elvis really, but uh, did except that Elvis made films that were successful. He sang and he was successful. He was a fucking live concert draw that was massively, but he actually was talented. Wig's not talented. But the the real parallels are really about his interpersonal relationships. Like El Priscilla was just, I mean, first of all, he was a 14-year-old kid that he fucked. Um, like Jimmy Page fucked Laurie Maddox. Like, when you're talking about Me Too, Elvis was the Jerry king. Jerry Lee Lewis. Too. Jerry Lee Lewis fucking killed one of his wives, I think, um, in addition to marrying his fucking 13-year-old cousin. But um, anyway, the the way Elvis was, was you, like you had to constantly defer to him. And it was very few people within the circle that could talk back to him. Um, and he'd take it, but that was because they had a bond, like a loyalty that, you know, you know, you can, yes, uh, Bob. So I think when a lot of people hear this and maybe you guys probably think this too, like how, how do I have the experience with MPD that I have? And the main thing that I could say, cause even right now, a friend of mine, it's trying to date this um, a woman who's trapped in a relationship with someone who has MPD. It, it's not, again, narcissism is on the rise just as a whole in society. And um, narcissistic personality disorder, I always try to differentiate from that. But I'm noticing more and more, more people with it. So the reason why I have the experience with it is I learn the skill set of I learned, I learned the habits and, and the behaviors of it when I was studying um, psychopaths. And the thing is, is, you always see remarkably the same thing over and over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I have these interactions and I can understand when somebody has this, it's not even that I'm looking for it. They always have these same patterns. So every time, you know, this... this um, friend of mine that this uh, and I, I I know the girl somewhat that he's trying to date <clears throat> when I go and I see them again and she's with this guy I'll just start to make notes you know mental notes and the thing is is you see re remarkable consistency in their diet in their social dynamics mm -hmm. so that's why I can say things to a certain confidence because I've seen it on all levels, what's so fascinating about Howard is he's reached this very high and very public level, which mm -hmm. makes him such a fascinating case. And I've actually talked to other um, guys I know that are in psychology. They're, you know, they're they're absolute geniuses, and I brought him up. He's so irrelevant; they don't even know that he's still around. But mm -hmm. I like to submit these things to them because it's just like this is such a fascinating thing that somebody with this to this degree reached this level. And on top of that, it's public. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. It's public and not acknowledged by other public figures, which is even right. more fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. And that goes along the lines with famous people who are pedophiles who aren't acknowledged until, you know, they're in fucking court or yeah, dead. Or, or dead uh, or in jail. But on the track of what you were saying, so this high level of society narcissism that you're noticing and that yeah. I do too as well notice, don't you feel that these types of people are the ones on both polar opposites of trains of thought who will never meet in the middle. These are the ones that are kind of like pulling the strings in conversations, which is actually what narcissists do. So we have these like large groups of people who refuse to see in the middle or the other side or any sort of logical thought. And I feel like, this Howard sort of personality is kind of dominating right now. Yeah. Am I, yeah, yeah. am I wrong in that train of thought? Well, yeah. like I said, um, in the last recorded episode, which is coming out, I believe that a nar- narcissism is in a, it's, it's an adaptogenic state of the brain to where it wires itself for more emotional based thinking. So when you're talking about, um, why can't people see the logic or see the facts and this and that? Emotion is devoid of that. E- emotion is devoid of logic. You know, it, it, sure. it, it, people are being more and more wired to engage in a more self-absorbed and emotional-based way of thinking. And I almost view that as more of a survival type of thinking or someone who's been exposed to trauma and i believe a lot of what's in the media and part of the reason why i speak out on howard stern in specific because if you look back on some of those shows it's almost like a trauma that you were engaging in subconsciously sometimes it was consciously with certain women that would come in there and he'd be very Mm -hmm. abusive towards them and i think that he was instrumental in ushering in at least to some degree a normalcy of um, trauma and abuse. Yeah, debasement. Yeah, and so that's where I sort of see society going now. I see a lot of emotional thinking. I see a lot of abuse. I see things going on in the media where they foster this sort of sense of pleasure and seeing the other person suffer that disagrees with you. And and Mm -hmm. both sides will air those sorts of things, you know. Yeah. This guy proved my point wrong and his whole family was killed and this guy proved my point wrong and he was killed. And that's that's a very worrisome thing to me when you start to condition a lot of just basically many Howard Stern's people that revel in um, sadistic pleasures and abuse and, and control and self-absorption. And we see now with Howard, he's a highly... Um, dysfunctional person and he's left kind of a path of destruction so which which actually makes me a little furious when i read excerpts or uh, extracts from um um from psychology today for example because there are any number of people writing on there that claim to have been fans but i i don't detect any self-awareness from any of them Uh, not self-awareness any awareness that deep awareness of howard because they're getting him wrong. They're getting him completely wrong. And if mm-hmm. you recognize NPD in someone, it's because you've done the reading, most likely. It's because you've, mm-hmm. done, you've made a study of it. So now you're at the point, Bob, and, and I think Sam and I are both now, after having done, this is almost like um, our own undergraduate work as well, mm. doing, studying him. You can't help but see it in people when you see it. It's almost like you're yeah. wearing these glasses that it's, um, it's, uh, it's like reflex. Mm-hmm. You notice you can you can spot it now without meaning to. It's a become it's become a, a, almost like a, a subconscious. Yeah, and and that's why I was saying like anybody who's listening to this and how does this guy interact with this many narcissists? He, you know, I, I'm not a psychologist. I do have a degree in psychology, but it's just because over the years the can the the amount of consistency that you see in their behaviors. And once you recognize it, and then you start to really pay attention with a certain level of awareness, you mm-hmm. will absolutely see patterns. Yes. And they're so distinct. And especially mm-hmm. if you interact with them on a one-to-one basis, 
you will see the same things play out in their lives over and over and over again. The stuff with Howard not wanting his staff to realize their own esteem, their own talents, and go out and do things. I see that on every level of NPD, even the most minute level. And in the case that I'm referring to, um, which is my, my friend, this girl that he's trying to see, her boyfriend won't even allow her to set up her keyboard. Um, she's a, a pianist. He won't allow her to set up the keyboard in the living room because I believe he doesn't want her to play it to start to get, in their mind, ideas of and, and start to generate their own esteem. And so you can see even that that minute of an example can be when you're talking on a scale of Howard Stern, you're talking about everything being scaled up to a much larger level. Yeah, ampli amplified. amplified. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to continue with this one and hopefully get through the, some of the other clips. Uh, a lot of them went out every night, and I did break it off. I couldn't deal with it. Why not? Because I don't like to be left alone. Why? Because I'm jealous. That's I not want... why you broke yep. up with them. No, that's not why. I don't want, I want to be with someone at night. <laughs> you want someone there. Right. <laughs> but do you want someone fully there would be the question. I don't have an answer. Right. Or do you want someone who reminds you you're there? I want somebody to remind me that I'm there. Well, that's that's See, a that's little a more sickness. concerning. I'm a very Holy sick man. Holy fuck! I I remember you know, when I when I heard that, that I I brushed. That is the sign. Hold on, of when I I'm when, NPD. When I first heard that, I was actually blown away because it there was no joke in there. There was it was not it was so matter of fact and so plainly spoken that I th really thought I was in somebody else's psychiatry session or psychology psychologist chair uh, listening to someone's eavesdropping almost, which was when the Sturm show was really at its best. It made you feel like you were in the room and you were having a conversation with these people. You just couldn't be heard. But for him to admit that is astounding. Yeah. And, and Ablo knew that too. And he yeah. heard his reaction. He was like, Oh, I, I was hoping you wouldn't take that, but you're so far gone. You, you're actually mentally ill, and you yeah. caved into that. Right. So, and as you said, Bob, there is no uh, recovery at that point. Like, there's no fixing a narcissist. They would like in this case, uh, someone who has NPD. They're not get. They're just getting worse. They're never getting cured. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Which leads, it lends more credence to the idea that he's not even going to psychiatry. He's not even seeing his analyst anymore. It's all bullshit. So well, let's continue that one. I'm, I, I'm never, <laughs> delightful, <laughs> delightful nonetheless. I have a lot of issues. So I'm working on my issues in therapy. And I okay. know that about myself. And I do say to Beth, she sure, should it's going to be hard for me when you go out. But by all means, you're a person. You have your <laughs> needs. And you need to go out. You, you... And she's not asking me for permission. I uh, know I yeah, don't ask him but, for permission, but I I feel the grudge when I. Now you're now welcome to Allison's world, honey. That's exactly what Allison had to fucking deal with with this asshole. He she goes you know he 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 doesn't want to go out, but if I go out for five minutes, he goes crazy. Mm -hmm. So and listen mm -hmm. to her voice tremble. Yes, I, 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 feel, I, the feel, the I feel the grudge. I feel the grudge. I feel the grudge. That night that I'm leading up to leaving, and then the next so day serious. you yeah, left I, me with my. Dinner all by myself. I warmed I up my away. meatballs. I'm like, well, I prepared the meatballs. You, you inspire I guilt. I emotionally pull away from people he who does. leave me. Yeah, that's right. I do. And then I think about that too when I'm out, so I can't fully enjoy the experience. Good. I mean, that's oh, terrible. Wonderful. Good. Good. That sounds great. <laughs> sounds healthy. <laughs> and just like we said the first time, listen yeah. to the minutia of the argument that was presented that has uncovered this vast amount of fucked upness. I'm a very passionate man. <laughs> so he's winning. I only want to stay home because I'm the happiest when I'm you know home. Also it's clearly she... a reign of terror. Oh, it's a... my God. Well, it's a... It's a... <laughs> you know, you might be onto something. Maybe I'm the wrong might guy. Be. I'm not, I'm not a good... Are you doing this for the show? No, but you, you know really what... serious saying that I'm the wrong guy? No, I mean, I always felt... No, that... You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm bad. He's threatening you with abandonment. Yeah. yeah. He's saying if you equalize yes, this relationship, that's what I'm doing. That's right. I may well pull out. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, for Ralph's asshole. Um, the <laughs> like it, he's nailed him. He nailed him so fucking completely. Yeah. yeah, he nailed himself. Really, let's let's be honest. Sam, you look like you're in shock, and you yet you've heard this a thousand times. Because it's just this. You're you're sitting here in a complete conundrum of 
nonsensicalness. It's just insane. So you want this person to earn for herself and be her own person, but no, you have to stay at home, but no, you can't present the argument that you don't like, that I make you feel guilty when you go out and you have to do. It's absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's fucking insane. Yeah. I would lose my mind. There is not a goddamn... I don't care how much money he makes. No one can put up with this. Well, I, well, it, I could see it if she actually got a chance to enjoy his money, which she doesn't, because with the amount of money he, we think he's worth, which we know it's tens of millions at the very least, um, she could be traveling, she could be seeing the world, she could be fucking like seeing, then, modeling, like like model, you know, well, not in COVID, you know, 2020, but obviously normally she could go to the fucking Cinque Terre, she could go to goddamn uh, Antigua, she could go anywhere she wanted. Like for, uh, forever and enjoy. So herself. then here's my question for Bob, because I wrote this down aside from not even the piddly shit. Why she, you when you're an NPD abuse, when you're abused from somebody who has NPD, mm-hmm. you don't feel the safety to leave, especially if you're not smart like Beth. OK, mm-hmm. so you've been programmed almost robotically mm-hmm. to be this tor- this type of person to deal with him. Mm-hmm. How do you safely leave this situation? What right now would be mm-hmm. the best way for her to leave? Because I truly think there is no way out for her unless she leaves. And I don't feel bad for her. And I'll keep saying this. I think that she has played into this a whole bunch. But when you first hear this stuff and now you look in hindsight, it's like, oh, fuck. Like you could just see the abuse scaled up. And before There's, you go into it, Bob, didn't you sure. mention, I think earlier in one of the first episodes that, uh, the, when people do leave the, the, the object of the NPD, uh, this, this NPD person or the mm-hmm. spouse, let's say they generally don't have anything to do with them ever again. There is no oh. clean break. There's no such thing as a clean break with them. Correct. Correct. Um, again, Anybody who's listening to this show that's dealing with someone that they suspect has NPD or is a psychopath, um, the only way to get away from them is is to leave and never look back. There yeah. is no there is no formula. There is no the, the only thing that you can do is you can use the gray rocking method up until the point that you leave. They will come after you, most likely. They will do everything they can to get you back, and um, they will probably smear campaign you, but that's the only way to get out. There, there is no other way. You have to just leave and not look back, not accept any money, sever all ties, everything. Yep. I could just see the fucking pity party parade. He would, sh- he would throw himself if she left. He would um, be the victim. Yeah. Absolutely. But he, and, he, and then he wouldn't actually reveal anything until years later. It would slip out in some, you know, nondescript uh, Yeah, like Rock Hudson? <laughs> Just a little bit. That's right. the problem yeah. right there. I know how to it's get the like people. As lo- and you're very good. That's subtle. Yeah. And thank you, Dr. Yeah, because it looks for bringing like... it out. It sounds fun, but what he's really doing is controlling everything and determining exactly how it's going to be. Are you be. saying yeah. now it's being passive-aggressive? I'll, I'll make it even, <laughs> even more, more incredible. What? I'm a hugely difficult person to live with. Oh. But he says that with glee. He he doesn't say that with any kind of embarrassment. He doesn't say that with a tone that would suggest he's trying to better himself. It's just like, hey, I'm difficult. Like, that's my name, difficult. Go ahead, go, Bob, you were going to say. Well, Robin would definitely know because she's probably been dealing with his subtle abuse for a long time. And again, remember, covert and subtle are, are you're essentially saying the same thing. And um, it's this very subtle abuse. And... Um, yeah, you see it on full display there. And I think that Robin really saw this as a... <clears throat> I think Robin almost, in a way, feels protected by Ablo. So she's able to kind of point these things out because she, I'm sure, has been dealing with this for many years. And she's like, you're really tricky with that. You're really subtle with those things. Like, that's not a new thing to her when she heard that. Mm-hmm. Um, let's continue with the rest of us and see how far we can get. Who's ever <laughs> you that the fact that beth can do this who has i mean she's mentally ill i do not envy 
<laughs> be I'm not mentally mind. ill at all. Oh. At I first guess. it did, I have to say. I used to be Howard's number one hobby. He's still my number one hobby. Stop. Bob's right. Robin is using Beth almost as um as the example of how she is realizing what Howard Svengali like narcissism is. So yeah. Beth's body is it's insignificant. She doesn't care about how Beth feels. This no. she's using Beth and how he treats her as a way to point out the nuances of his subtle narcissistic abuse. Mm-hmm. Covert. Yeah. yeah. Like, Bob, you, you read that segment I sent you from the uh, Miss America book that he wrote in, in the guise of, he said it was a fan letter and it might have been. Yeah. But it's, uh, and it probably was, it was, but it was, it was written in a way that suggests it probably was a fan letter. Um, and it talks shit, like it compa- compares uh, Robin to Mussolini and how yeah. she was nothing without Hitler. <laughs> so mm-hmm. in this case, he's Hitler. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll read it to you guys uh, when we do a coverage of that book. So. Um, now chess is his number one hobby, but no. I, yes, it is. No, you are my number one. Oh, but, no, but listen, hey, let me ahead, make yes. a, a therapeutic intervention yeah, You, you here. stopped her before she answered. Yeah, you said no. <laughs> Almost like she's six. No, I mean, you were like, no, that's Wait not a second. Right. You didn't say six, tell me more. Six, like I didn't two. Tell my number no, one don't is. pick that up. Tell you don't what eat that. Feel yes. Right. Your... Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. She please. feels like she's been replaced by, you know, kings and rooks. <laughs> okay. I mean. <laughs> so wrong. I mean, you got to get her. A... <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, you were talking uh, through it a little bit, Sam, but basically, yeah, he said, he said, uh, they, they pointed out, no, she's telling you how she feels, asshole. It's not telling you what you feel uh, but he had to make it about himself but here's the interesting thing they're all sort of piggybacking on to this protection that Ablo is providing and they're all showing him stuff That's even right. Artie I mean everybody involved Gary I think just said but you just cut her off you didn't let yeah him. they all want to say this stuff to him and, and they all they all want to get a, get a piece of him they all they all yeah. want a piece off his fucking arse which, um, which makes it even more interesting to think if what was what would this conversation be like for the jingle ball call if Keith uh, Abelow was on? Because oh you know they would have agreed with Allison. Yep. Let's let's try to soldier through. Diamond pin of a rook today. Oh no, thank you. And that was the day that I arranged had arranged for his chess instructor to come in for the weekend. Yes. I took the chess instructor and his wife out to dinner and I for his gift I paid for a whole day one on one face to face session with the instructor. Had a lunch a chef come in and cook us all lunch. It's the most loving thing someone has ever done. I've never been more Is bored. it loving or selfless? <laughs> You've never what? No, 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 no. no You've never no. been more what? Well, I was bored because you were playing chess all day and it was your birth or was it what was it your birthday? It was my birthday and i was away from you all day i i was out Miss- shopping and 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 i was so warmed by my gesture and i knew that you were so happy did you hear like this is like a barrel of fucking narcissists uh, so it's she's warm by her gesture and she doesn't even know what she's doing it for so his money like let's be real yeah. Yeah. she's paying for with his money who cares either way a gesture that warms her and she doesn't even know it was your birthday or what was it? What was it? I mean, wouldn't you know if it warmed you so much? Right. And she was upset because she wasn't involved in it other than the fact that she put it together. Well, you don't get someone to dinner somewhere and say, but oh, oh, I'm coming along with the dinner. I mean, you Chess can take someone out for people. dinner. Well, yeah. And you, it's his chess master and him, but she decided like, okay, I have to be involved in this. Otherwise, it's not really from me. Like, that's kind of a weird way to approach giving someone a gift. The whole white like, BD is to make them happy, regardless of how you feel about what you did with the gift. Like, if, you're, mean, if you want to, you do this because you want to, not because you, you want to feel um, yourself that you've done a great thing. It's supposed to be external, you know, you're, you're completely, you're supposed to disassociate yourself from the fact that, yeah, I'm doing this because I want to. I'm doing this because I want to, and it does make me feel good to do this, but it shouldn't be contingent on whether you're involved or not. How about you she's... fucking cook, Beth? <laughs> yeah, God. Engagement chicken? <laughs> she, that's her one trick. We should we forgot to play that one, but it's another time. Say, uh, Bob? I, I think she's trying to take this to a lighter, safer area. 
and spin one of their uh, narratives. I, I guess I don't. I don't like using that word, but yeah, one of their um, you know fairy tales, like j- just getting it to a lighter. I I got on this dinner with uh, You're right. such a, and even then, because now it's reached a serious level. She tried to do that, and they're both looking at her for serious answers, and she's panicked, and it's spinning out of control, and she's trying to say the right thing, is what I'm yeah. getting from this. Yeah, yeah. And this is a less substantial, um, this is a less substantial answer that can garner such like a criticism from Keith Avalo. So she's actually saying the story to kind of, uh, you're Reflect. right, take it away. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe maybe wind it down a little bit and try to exactly. yeah make it make it into lighthearted. Yeah, lighthearted is a good expression. But I was away from you, so that was a gift that I tried to embrace, but it didn't include me really, except for the the meals. And <laughs> we're talking about chess. chess. What is it, Ralph wants yeah. to chime in on my session uh, again? Here he is uh, to come. To, 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 to. Another woman Ralph. Ch- heard. Are Ralph. you there? Uh, hey now. Yeah. Hey, hey now. Uh, I have a serious question for you, Beth. That, that I about. <laughs> and I know, I know you observe this. How, how do you put up with Howard's constant complaining? <laughs> yeah, it is true. They all look like this is his other girlfriend. Of course it is. And I didn't play that other clip. I should have where he, he called up Beth and he asked. He goes, uh, "Howard gave me a big bunch of money. Uh, I know you and I are in the same boat." <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like, well, she's not, you're not his girlfriend. <laughs> like, what do you mean she's not? How do you deal with this constant complaining? And this reminds me of my gay best friend when yeah. we're both, you know, like we just both look at or we're thinking the same thing or we're talking about. I mean, this is insanity. They of all have some They're all fully aware of what he is. Yeah. You you laugh it off. You know what I do? I laugh it off. Just when he's complaining in front of us, Ralph, and you and I are together, we look at each other and I roll my eyes and I kind of smile. That's how I deal with it on my own. I turn around, I smile to myself, and I... You know, do I, I constantly complain? Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> About do but you, you like it. Yourself at all? No, I you like when you. I critique. I love you. You like when I critique things. That's what I'm doing. What do I complain about? What did I complain <laughs> about? Ralph, help me. No, really. What do I complain about? You're everything. About everything. <laughs> well, I. <laughs> But, and they oh, do. I don't complain. I'm criticizing. What do I complain about? You complain about I'm, everything. Well, I'm going to make a big excuse for why I complain about everything because my life's so hard and mwah. Exactly. And I love how Artie's first initial reaction is to laugh. Like, <laughs> guttural laughter, which means true. I mean, it, Artie could not fake a laugh to save his life. When he does laugh, it's absolutely genuine because he's tickled. <laughs> the heart. <laughs> exactly. You have to handle things. There was one day Ralph was over all day, and we were so aware that you were complaining. There was not one positive thing that came out of your mouth. And we looked at each other, and then we realized while we were looking at each other, there was not one happy positive thing in the whole day. The, Ralph I'm was there for like 10 hours. I'm a very angry man. Internally I'm very angry, yes. I'm a tremendous it's, It makes anger. me you know, so sad that you are. such a happy, like, person. I mean, it I sounds guess so wonderful. There. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do you, imagine. Do you picture do you picture Beth as one of those like punching Beth, you know those clown those inflatable clown things you used to punch as kids and they'd come right back up but it is yeah. like, like a smile on their face like yeah yeah of course. So imagine Beth in this fucking situation where she has to weather that bullshit. Now she signed up for it. She wanted to do it. I don't have any sympathy personally, but I don't know how anyone could be so brain dead as if to fucking take it for any kind of money, as you said, think, Sam. If you took it away, like if you took away what we know about her now, yeah. Let's just say, right. If you took away all that bullshit, animal, faux, kitten nonsense, right. whatever, right. tension whoring magazine, blah blah, take it away. You would feel bad for her in this clip. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you didn't know what you already know. They, they are remarkably, and again, I say this because we all know negative people. People with narcissistic personality are remarkably negative <laughs> all the time about everything. And, it, and it's to a point, and they know that they do it because it wears people out around them and it wears targets out around them. But they are profoundly negative, mm-hmm. profoundly negative, and it just 
exhaust and just drains the soul of everyone that's near them. So, so as a result, uh, Bob, would you say that someone who has this, like Howard, when they do compliment people, it's pure bullshit or it's a means to get something? It's, it, can, can, you, can you say that it's probably never a legitimate compliment? Yeah, they don't ever really offer a legitimate compliment. It's, it's always a loaded thing. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, damn, for- I really thought he liked Ellen's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but at some point, don't you think that's going to wear thin with you, Beth? Well, Beth has an illness. Did she so happy? <laughs> are you testing her? <laughs> I feel bad for her. Reality. But she doesn't see it the way it is. I have tremendous anger. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it, Which it, derives from your childhood experiences. I don't know where it's oh. deriving from. Well, yes. I mean, yeah, but I'm very, a- I'm very angry. You're very angry. A- okay. And she feels for broken, she injured feels, She feels sad beings. for me. Yes. <laughs> she feels sad for me. <laughs> Not for her own life, which is now miserable when you're married to this, almost married to this fuck. Right. And so everything she delivers to you, by the way, is in a very loving way. Yes. She's All the most I adore him. She's the most lo- yeah, Sam. Okay. Listen to this whole dialogue, too. And I just dawned on me. He has three children. Yeah. Like, this doesn't even factor into anything. Like, listen to this, Michigas. It's such, it's such peripheral nonsense. Like... I can't even imagine having this type of sort of frank conversation with a psychologist and you don't even mention your fucking children until the very end. And she has to say, oh, he's a very loving father. And he goes, I'm an OK father. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is one of my favorite. I'm I an think, OK father. I think Ablo is trying to bring him back to a safe space. OK, c- complain about your parents again. It's something yeah. that happened because he knows like we're starting to get into bigger territory here. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, let's continue. Loving woman I've ever met. I love him. I, I love you so I much. Do. I love Wouldn't her. this be... <laughs> my love knows no boundaries. Does you know she? Why this is Bob. interesting to me. I mean, my love for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sam. Were you, were, you, were you just mugging? <laughs> Does she, Bob? Does she love no. him? No. Okay. Right. I would say no. Right. What was that, <laughs> what was that joke? <laughs> Sal said something like, um, uh, <laughs> what was... <laughs> When you met no, Beth, were you, were you wearing a, a suit made of $100 bills? <laughs> 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 Something like that. Howard, yes. remember when you read the book Marley and Me? Uh, yes, I did. And you were very touched by the book? I got him the book, by the way. Oh, that was sweet. Yes. <laughs> that was the funny, it was one of the funniest things. I got him the book, by the way. I <laughs> have to take credit for this shit. Anyway, so the, the, that one I left out. I just wanted to leave that part. And I left the, the main part of it where she said he bawled, he bawled, and he, you know, he, he, for, he, about Marley and me. You don't even remember. Have you fogged over and you don't no, remember? No, I remember. How, what was it that touched you about the book? I forget. I knew it. I am not comfortable <laughs> with emotion. I'm not comfortable You're not with comfortable feeling. with feelings. No. I grew up Probably. in a shithole. I can be anywhere. Uh, I, 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 but honey, you never, you never uh, said I, I need to go to hell. Pittsburgh and be with your family. Well, now's the time it's going to happen, and no, I'm already nervous. She's about already about it. nervous. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because I want it to be perfect for no, us. For him. <laughs> stop, stop, perfect. Yeah, you guys say for, for you. him. Oh, <laughs> you love that, Bob. Fillmore, yeah. that could have been you. <laughs> what do you mean? For him. The way he just had said for him wasn't that such a <laughs> Fillmore esque way of saying it? <laughs> I don't know. Even even Ablo's had enough of his shit. For yeah. him, <laughs> is that who it is? I'm, and you know they're not even paying him to attend. He, like this is just yeah. another free guest that they can get in, and he's oh, trying to I'm glom. Sure they charged him parking to come in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they enough. wouldn't validate. <laughs> no. He sold the serious stock. Everything's going to shit. And he's and his stomach's grumbling because there's nothing yeah, in the green they, room. They, they invoiced him for the cupcake he had. <laughs> they fucking made him pay crumbs. <laughs> yeah. You'll heart. be fine with him. She's very you know worried. No, she watched you him, every right? second yeah. that she delivered that right. statement. She you watched did, you honey. every <laughs> so nanosecond. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> and now she's reassuring you, by the way. Yes. She's like, uh oh, I better tell him how beautifully, how much what I love him. What do you think's going on here, Dr. Abelo? I. The resistor in the circuit. I remember one caller calls in and goes, what did we learn? I think we learned that she'd be safer with Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, oh, 
I think it's <laughs> Oh my god, you look like like a fucking corpse that was put in the barrel during a season of Dexter. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Listen, Fuck. there's some words that don't go along with certain things, items, people. When's the last time you ever saw him look beautiful? Oh. When's the first time you ever saw him look beautiful? <laughs> He's like a weekend at Bernie's. The uncle, he, it's so, something's keeping that guy alive, man. I don't know what it is. I, it fucking, it's like saying like, oh, just see this Sam on this podcast. She's classy. She talks, she speaks. <laughs> she, like she graduated from finishing school. <laughs> Sam's elocution lessons are coming into play. Is that what we don't want is for any. The rain in to be Spain. Hit. Falls mainly on the plane. Sam, what is that? What is the um, before junior high? What is that level of schooling? <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> yes. Okay. You had to drop that one at least once. Gendered over years, as you say, God, you know what? I've really yeah, been well, worried fuck about you. Him you're all just getting me to say that word. I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made my sister say that at a birthday party. Because said, someone. Someone I in the comments I said, what "Interesting." All the grades two That's through right. four. That's and right. She said elementary, and I said, "Yeah, right." And she goes, "Yeah," and I go, "I'm being called out for this." <laughs> yeah, but no, they were not. You weren't being called out. They just said, "Interesting use of the word." Interesting way of pronouncing elementary, I believe. And, and but I mean, <laughs> look, this is we're sidetracking into accents now. So. <laughs> Oh, fuck it. Anyway, we we occasionally do these little uh, detours, guys, but relax. So uh, let's continue. There's only about a minute left of this. He thinks whether he's walking on the white carpet, I got to worry about the hotel. Uh, and in too the back, I want him to be comfortable at all it's times. Not too, it, but that's too much of a burden for you. Yeah, to, oh. to have to have that constant anxiety, which comes from where? I asked you, but we didn't really get into it, but we could at some time in the future or now. But it has to have come from somewhere. Your capacity to be. Fear. I always take care of people around me. My mother. <laughs> he just blurted that out to Sam. Sam did a spit take. <laughs> ah, <Yeah. fear. laughs> Zero irony. I don't know. Did we? Well, it, I don't remember us catching that in the first thing. Maybe we talked over it. Where did that come from? Fear. <laughs> Bob, Bob, like it's almost like he took he he uh, undid his uh, jacket and showed a bunch of guns to her. <laughs> so this is what's waiting for you if you fuck yeah. with me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, oh my god, is he wearing uh, a fucking bomb vest? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob's shaking his head too, and it ain't the beer. <laughs> what a fucking nightmare of a guy. What a fucking nightmare of a person. Seriously. <laughs> So imagine so just just a little off topic before we continue before we wrap this up because I don't I think this will be the end of this and then we'll continue it at another time and I'll release what we have then or I'll put it all together from a couple of days worth. Um, so if you're Ross Zapin or if you're Dominic or if you're I don't know whoever else likes to fucking like to hang around with him and and actually spend time with him, what mm. kind of assholes does it make them? Well, birds of a feather. Yeah. You know? I mean yeah, that's yeah, why. That's the thing when we bring up Ralph, <laughs> Birds of we don't have to go down this route, but when people wonder what Ralph is, it's like, okay, Ralph's an entitled person who can't sustain relationships on an adult level, who doesn't want to do anything. Like, it sounds like Howard Stern to me. Like, it, it people, if, if if, it, if librarians hang out with other librarians, you know, jocks hang out with other jocks, like dysfunctional fucked up people hang out with other dysfunctional fucked up people. I know. Just people how it goes. Like suck cock. And... Bridge and tunnel cock smokers who used to be parking lot attendants hang out with other ones. <laughs> yeah, they're just dysfunctional fucking weird people that... <laughs> I don't know. That That's why I think they're friends. <laughs> we, I think if, Sam, if we dug up Sam Simon and reanimated him, we could get some answers out of him. Yes, Sam. We should end this episode with a thank you for being a friend. Oh, okay. 
you look at Dominic, would you say that he has a lot of successful adult relationships? Or, I mean, would you say that that's a functional human being? Like, just this, just this ask is, every one of his ex wives. I mean, They'll yeah, like long. he's a fucking mayday, mayday, controlling <laughs> narcissist. So that's yeah. who Howard hangs out with because that's what he is. Yeah, well, like, you know. on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll true fucking radio off? <laughs> that was the end of that one. They always said you're a people pleaser. You always, you know, Why? want to say the right Why thing. Why should you your mother say... define who you are? What's wrong with her taking no, care of her? Don't I do want to <laughs> keep but, up with but that. You're saying, but you're saying, it's not, what Dr. Ablo is saying, it's not real love that you feel for me. It's more fear. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. So no, no, no. I did not hear. He literally wants to be the boat captain in Cape Fear. He wants to be Robert Hero. <laughs> He's such a fucking loser. He's just admitting what he knows. Yeah, That's exactly. All I uh, Last bit, guys. Please Please let not the true. Doctor <laughs> Go ahead. I have found my peace yes. with this man. Like uh, I really have. I am so happy and fulfilled and just full and warm with this man in front of me okay sam what <laughs> you, you wanna... here's johnny <laughs> yeah beautiful beautifully said i love the sentiment it doesn't erase as you two are prone to do yes. it doesn't erase the subsoil right. that we've uncovered right right in other words it doesn't erase the anxiety that she might experience in the relationship it's not all perfect it's not it's not even close to being in the same vicinity as perfect except perfect. if you're talking about like the uh, American bot gothic painting which uh, I might photoshop to do one of them um it's astounding doing uh, good, I don't right bob <laughs> perfect yeah, yeah. perfect cuz all perfect couples need to keep telling us that they're perfect that's the <laughs> first sign that they're doing well I love that that psychology clip where we'll play another one where, he, where the psychologist psychiatrist goes to him. Uh, Listen, we have to explore, you know, homosexuality. She said, Bullshit! I'm not going to explore that. I'm, I like chicks, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> every straight guy has said that, and every every couple that's happy he tells you how perfect their life is. Beth has more style. I definitely have more style. He has a stylist. I do not. And I love it when. I love it when I'm in bed, making love to my wife and at home, just relaxing. I love it when it's just the two of us alone together. Recipe for a perfect date night? <laughs> home, dinner, glass of wine, and to bed. Right? What'd she say? Definitely a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite clips of all time. <laughs> she never mentioned anything about making love. He never mentioned anything about a bottle of wine. <laughs> bottle of wine, first thing right off the bat. S Sam, Sam, what do you think about bottle doing? <laughs> bottle of wine, some Vicodin. Hopefully not to the point where I'm completely passed out and can't pick myself up up the stairs. Right. But maybe Bianca can carry me if she's at weight. <laughs> Beth's stringy hairs, stringy extensions getting caught up in Roomba. <laughs> Roomba trying to get away. Hey, guys, I'm doing the talk out. So... <laughs> Listen, we really heavily did this episode um, with Bob and Fillmore and Beth and Howard, and we're spent. So next episode, we're going to go into a little bit more in depth for the NPD with some amazing clips and a lot more coming. So thanks for listening to Quite Frankly. What would, in this particular case, guys, we ended up, I think, finishing up with the, uh, I can't remember, I think it was the ABLO or just about after the ABLO rundown we did that was truncated. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing now is we're going to try to finish off Beth Stern and Howard's relationship. So I'm going to start with this one. It's a clip of Ralph. <laughs> well, you guys hear it. It's Ralph saying that he and Beth are in the same boat. But before we do, mm -hmm. go ahead, Sam. <laughs> I just have to tell you guys i found this twitter account it's called beards club oh, yes. on twitter mm -hmm. so they have about um multiple like thousands and thousands of followers i want to say like around twenty five thousand followers That's and they just basically troll celebrities who they think or have proof of that have been you know having bearded relationships and okay. so that they post the pictures and they have proof or articles of it. Well, they posted one of Beth and Howard, like when they first got started, when Twitter was first started, like years yeah. ago. 
Right. And then I um, posted a picture of Ralph and him. I did a collage of him and Ralph, who, <laughs> two of them, and then him in drag with beef in the Santa Claus outfit. Right. And then him and Beth just together regularly standing like the ghouls that they are. Yeah. And that. Not the one where, not the one the where he's pe- five steps ahead and she's trailing yeah. behind. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and the Beards Club retweeted it and it got yeah. so many like, oh, it's, it was been hiding in plain sight. <laughs> this makes sense. Well, and then give us, I give took us some, Benjamin, hold on. And then I took Benjamin's. I took Benjamin's is Howard happy video where he just does a oh, montage yeah. of him raping basically talk show Post. hosts and trying yeah. to make out with them. And they yeah. retweeted that one too. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I thought you were going to put uh, the Photoshop of the uh, his his brilliant Photoshop of uh, Doctor Sarno's curing back pain. <laughs> <laughs> I've done, I, Which I cured have done someone's that sexuality. One. <laughs> I love that one. I love that one. It was so subtle. Um, but uh, well, for example, just to just to also color it, who else is do, do they out on that? I know one of the Chris's, Chris Pine. Was on they there. Actually, they've been outing out a BBC host for like years, and he finally came out of the closet this year. I don't think you should be pushed to being outed, but Howard, this, this is my only exception with this. Right. The guy who works for the BBC isn't mocking gay people and right. mocking he people a... in the closet for years. Like That's Howard exactly mocked right. Ellen, Howard right. rocked, uh, mocked Rosie. He he mocked High Pitch Mike, who worked right. for him on his staff and basically bullied him into coming right. out. Uh, right. You know, he bullied a guy who is, you know, mentally disabled into being gay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> High pitch Eric and how, you know how many it's just whack like, packers? What? How many whack packers turned out to be gay, you deceased or or still alive? So like supposedly Caps I... Janks is as well. It's amazing how many turned out to be um, or claimed to be gay. Right, and I so in the in the thing that I posted, they retweeted. I said. Longest running beard relationship by far to cover up his long standing relationship with his quote unquote stylist, who was a teen parking attendant when he found him. Dot 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 dot. <laughs> and, <just> four, <laughs> and four grooming. people retweeted it. <laughs> it sounds like grooming 101. Uh, when you say parking lot attendant, it adds that extra little bit of. Mm. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but anyway, I, I like if it was a journalist or an anchor, like a TV anchor, that's not given to op-ed pieces, uh, you know, it's just, they're reporting the news or their game show host or something like that. There's, there's public and then there's public. And then if it was a religious guy who quote, who preached against homosexuality, of course you'd want that person to get fucking outed. So anyway, well, I think anybody question. that propagates a culture of abuse deserves all the ridicule that, that they get. Absolutely. You know, sexual or or any kind of abuse uh, he, he obviously partook in sort of uh propagating on a on a large scale so yeah like the Falwell stuff is amazing yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Junior, like that, I, that really- I, I was oh i knew that was going to be a lot better than when it first started trickling in i go well this is going to be good and yeah, of course it's a pool boy i'm like it's desperate housewives 101 juicy loving it that's when you use that Michael Jackson gif of him eating popcorn in Thriller at the, at the movie theater mm. or the, the giraffe with the big bowl of popcorn in front of the <laughs> yep. Yeah. Anyway, so this one clip, uh, let's see if I can get it. Uh, okay. Okay. Ralph asks Beth if she feels guilty. Well, that's when he called Beth and he said, you know, I really feel embarrassed uh, with these gifts from Howard and cashing them. Uh, you and I are in the same boat. He goes, it's just like it for me. He goes, he goes, don't you feel guilty when Howard gives you jewelry? Oh, and, what an, oh. And, 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 uh, and like, oh Beth was like, what is he talking about? What, what, okay, they're both paid employees. One of them sucks his cock, and the other one is Beth. So, well, that's our opinion, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wonder, how much is left of that clip? There's, it's, um... It, it it was based on uh, there's no that's the that's the whole clip because the rest yeah. of it is start them them like going well she's not my girl she's he's not my girlfriend and it's all this incredulous you know how could he say that when you think about it it mm. actually is Ralph doing us a favor by saying look you're a paid employee I'm a paid employee 
we're both here to make him look hetero. Mm -hmm. Um, except I, you know, we, I think we, (laughs) Sam and I both think that, uh, you know, well, here, here's work as unit and, um, you make him, you, you know, you go out with him in public. What's the difference? We're both salaried employees. Let's reverse this. Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, my boyfriend, one of his best friends said, I, he got me a beautiful necklace. And okay. then his best friend turns to me and says, don't you feel guilty? <laughs> or let's say one of his, he, he has a car lot, say one, one of his employees, his mechanic turns to me and says, oh, don't you feel guilty like I do getting that necklace? Because he earns a paycheck from my boyfriend. So right. why would I feel guilt? What would one have to do with the other? You're getting a paycheck because you're an employee. Why would I feel guilty as a girlfriend getting a necklace? Well, because that, I think they're ahead. both using them. Yeah. And I think he's saying we are both feeding into this illusion. We know that this illusion exists and we're here to facilitate the illusion and we're gaining benefit off of the solution or off of the illusion, um, whatever it may be. Um, that's sort of what I gather from that because I'm not in in the same school that that he's sleeping with Ralph. But I think what Ralph is saying, like, we're in the same boat in that both of us have interpersonal relationships with him, and we're facilitating this sort of illusionary thinking that we both know exists, and we're sort of facilitating this continual abuse, and we're both kind of playing them. Sam? Well, I can go if we if we were to take away what Fillmore and I think, and I'll go down your um, right. tra- train of thought. I'll walk that path. That makes then when he, what he's saying to Beth is basically like we are faking this friendship or we are faking this bond with Howard. Yes. It's, it's um, obligation that we have to mm-hmm. have this relationship with him to continue. And the things that we receive from him, I almost think guilty. Mm. Ralph might feel guilty, but I actually feel like it must feel extremely shitty to just like, oh, I got to pretend to like this person just to get this necklace. At that point, you just want like a trunk full of money. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Is that they're impossible? Both, they're both benefiting. Sh- they're both benefiting from fame, connections, money. Um, you know, all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. I should explain uh, the context for folks who don't know. This was around the time when he it was like Christmas or so. I, I can't remember exactly, but uh, he he supposedly gave Ralph a big check. It would have been I'm I'm assuming it was four figures, like five grand or something like that, and it was a lot of money. You know, some people were thinking JD went on the air and said he thought it was a million dollars. And he goes, and then Howard says something that made me fucking hysterical, laugh hysterically. He goes, for, for a million bucks, he better be blowing me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I should have pulled that. But uh, yeah, this is how they use money, though. This is why they like money. They don't like money for normal reasons. They don't like money because they can acquire other things, they like money because they can control things. And right. they're and he and Howard is controlling both of them. Both of them are generating him with supply, and mm-hmm. he's buying them off. Everybody knows what's going on, either consciously or subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So on the ra- on the wrap up show today, because even though the show's on vacation, I guess the wrap up show was going on. Oh really? Hmm. Yeah, and it was Rasan and Gary, or I'm sorry, Rasan and John Hine. And they were doing the old lie detector tests. So they did Robins and then they did Ralph's. You mean, and you mean, you mean the ancient one, like pre, pre the 2000s? The ancient one. Okay. Hmm. And they said the phones don't, the phones stopped working at some point because people were starting to question the relationship with Howard and Ralph, and we have to find this wrap-up show because I don't know if it's going to be taken out of the replay. And I hope one of our listeners heard it today because it started going downhill for Howard. And, yeah. Did you hear it? I, no, I didn't hear it. But another thing I want to add to hmm. the point of 
them being in it together, they probably both hate Howard and they both know that they hate Howard and they probably com- commiserated with each other over it. Like, you mean hey, Rasan, Rasan and Gary? Oh, no. Um, Beth, it, Beth, Beth and, and, Ralph. and Ralph. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I thought I thought I and Gary commiserated on the rap show to play the gayest stuff possible. <laughs> uh, that would be fantastic. I do think that Beth and Ralph, especially in these recent clips when she was saying that she always thought Ralph was gay, I think that Ralph is a is a lifesaver for Beth. She wants Ralph around. She doesn't want him to leave because then they could kibitz together like they they have talked about multiple times where they just look at each other and they give each other the eye of yeah. he's being such a miserable cunt and <laughs> does she nothing to... but negativity they yeah, she both wants to... know exactly how he is she wants exactly. a witness exactly <laughs> she wants no, no, she exactly also correct. ralph is one of the girls so it's like having another girl around but they'll, and... they'll turn every relationship into that because every relationship that they have that's close to a certain degree, that person always becomes not a separate being. That person, even if it is a male, even if it isn't a romantic relationship, if someone is close enough to them, they will turn this into this phenomenon where there is no autonomy. So that person is just subjected to the same sort of guidelines that a spouse would be subject subjected to mm-hmm. so they both know because they're subjected to the same at least ballpark of abuse and money is had uh, held over i'm sure both of their has along with status and connection so i'm sure i'm sure even even with all of that aside just them knowing howard on a more personal level they know what he's like and there's probably Mm -hmm. not a lot of people that get to see that and Mm -hmm. there's probably a lot of people that see a different side to him yeah so that just sort of solidifies their connection and that we know the real you know we know you're right because it because it's trickling in and that little trickle that we get the little dribs and drabs that Mm -hmm. is a that is a part of a lot bigger picture that you're saying these little mm-hmm. morsels that we are digesting, that's an indication of exactly what you're saying. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the next clip is called Wig Says That He and Beth Might Need Couples Counseling Because They're Things They Don't Talk About. And this is about 2008, early 2008. It might be before the Ablo thing, but I, I, I'm not sure. Either way, it would be in the same year. And I'm thinking that this year you should quit therapy. And I can tell you why. If you like why? It. I think you're beating yourself up too much about how you should be doing rather than just taking things as they are at the moment and just admitting to yourself, well, okay, I have issues, I'm still selfish and needy and insecure, but I... Um, yeah, but I'm not, I I'm, you have to understand when I go to therapy. And you know what, I've been giving a lot well, of thought to this. Well, let me finish, though. But, oh. Okay, just give, breaking it up, guys, sorry. Well, okay, you're the king, go ahead. I've been giving a lot of thought to this. Like, I was th- like, every time I'm away from therapy, because I've been away for two weeks, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I don't want to go to therapy anymore. I've been thinking about it because you know what it is? I feel like I've made progress in therapy, but I'm always just going to be miserable. Okay, go ahead, Sam. No, that seems hopeful. Um... <laughs> That's like going into a restaurant knowing the food's going to be shit and ordering anyway. So, Bob, do you think currently he's still in therapy because Fillmore and I have discussed this and we both think he's not because he's getting worse. Yeah, I, I think he is. Um, I think that therapy for him is probably a much different concept than it is for, for most other people. Um, I think Howard is, has really gone to another level. Um, I think his ability to manage his personality disorder and this is common in people as they get older Mm -hmm. is having um he's having less and less control over it and i i would love to know what's going on in those sessions i i would doubt um i mean again we're we're talking about a real personality disorder we're we're not talking about someone who's just a full-blown asshole like 
there there's <laughs> there's something clinical going on like there is yeah. a point that you reach where it's not manageable like if you if you send a schizophrenic person in for um you know therapy you're, you're gonna hit a wall with them because there is a serious issue going on that that probably has a a biological basis so i think he is still talking to him i don't think that he's getting any any of the benefit from it that i do think he was getting at this time though because i think he's just too far gone now to use an analogy although it's not it's not um psychology it's it's psychology related but it's not it's more about substances when i read the chris farley book uh, which was incredibly sad, the Chris Farley show, I think it was called. And um, they made a documentary about it, but the book is the one you got to read. It's really, by the end, I was fucking crying, and I, I, I didn't know the guy. Um, and the way one of the friends explained it to him was he, he had done rehabs like 12 times before he had passed away. And the, they said the problem was he had internalized all the dialogue, but he, he, he had he'd learned the lingo, the AA lingo, but he never, ever took it to heart. And he never, it was almost like he got like a fourth grade um, book summary of the AA thing, but didn't actually take the lessons it, it fully so that he wouldn't understand that this is why this keeps happening. And mm-hmm. so with Howard, my, my, my perception is, well, first of all, guys, it's Freudian. It's, it's analysis he's doing. It's not mm-hmm. modern clinical psychology. So there's no end goal. That's the problem. That's why yeah. Freud, Freudian analysis has been debunked. I don't know how long ago. And, but he insists on it because that's like, it's the first Chinese food he ever had. And that's the one he keeps ordering because that's the one he can't deal with anything else. Could you imagine him changing it suddenly and going to someone who's going to challenge him and say, look, you are fucked up. I, 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 want, I, want, I want to help you get better. You're not oh, getting you're better. But right. even, yeah. Right on that. But even like, say, if Bob D, who has said how hard it is for narcissists to even change, let alone if it's possible, could you imagine, say, the therapist says, I'm done, and he has to go and he suggests you have to go to this behavioral mod therapist. Mm -hmm. And so now he actually has to have culpable responsibility where he is changing not only his way of thinking, Mm -hmm. which is selfish enough but he actually has to produce actions he results. that results mm. exactly do you think mm. it, that's even possible bob because i don't well, no it, way it is but it would be extremely rare and i think that um howard found a guy because as you could as you could imagine uh when these people go into therapy they'll, they'll pretty quickly start to defraud the therapist and turn it into oh. basically a supply session. So to find a guy who's at a level that is sort of immune to that and is able to be very straight with him and able to harness directions he wants to go, um, you know, that's going to be a pretty rare thing. And I think Howard knows that. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think no. Abelo would have actually been. If he wasn't, you know, some sort of free BD- BDSM slave master. <laughs> we said, you know, he was very observant and hit on some very key points in the way he managed Howard during the session with him and Beth was very astute. Mm-hmm. I think that if Keith Ablo actually became Howard's therapist and wasn't a pile of shit, you know, personally, mm-hmm. he would have probably maybe could have done some good to with Howard and for Beth. Yeah. And then you start getting into trust issues and will this person run away with my money? And then when you have uh, someone like Howard that has sort of endless resource, you are going to run into a lot of people, even on a professional level that are going to take advantage of that. And completely. I'm sure he knows that and he doesn't trust anybody, you know, they they don't trust anybody ever yeah. at all. Doesn't right. matter how close they are. I think we might have even played that on one episode. Maybe not, but there's one where Robin asks him, "Who do you trust?" And he goes, "My psychiatrist." <laughs> and that's because yeah. no you know he, his his first answer was a psychiatrist, and then he goes, "Do you don't have any friends you can confide in?" And he goes, mm, "Well, there's Ralph. Well, you pay Ralph." And I go, "Well, there's Beth." 
and she you pay her too. And he goes, I don't <laughs> trust anybody I don't pay. It's true. And, yeah. And so uh, we'll we'll continue with the clip anyway because it is actually fascinating. But I was thinking he should go to the fucking psychiatry school of Artie, where he just tells him to fuck off, and mm-hmm. just, you know, get a Philly cheesesteak and shut the fuck up. Your life is too good. And <laughs> you're resigned. Yeah, and it's like I don't know. It just seems to me that I started to say to myself, the real reason I went to therapy is because I have this feeling inside that I'm just miserable. And even Beth has to constantly remind me, don't become one of those pranky, miserable men. <laughs> you know, she has to, like, she sees. And she shakes you up and says, stop it. Yeah. Because- <laughs> this is 2008, guys. <laughs> 12 years later, he's not, not, ain't a damn thing changed. He's still a miserable old twat. Oh my God. Think about how happy you would be with half a million dollars. <laughs> And endless resources and a three-day work week where you just get to kibitz and laugh. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine a more privileged, amazing existence, which is why, Bob, what the fuck? Half a million? This is, again, yeah, he's he's got way more. (laughs) Um, This is, again, like, the misery that these people have is so far beyond just your typical oh my friend's negative or i have a negative coworker. my my parent is negative maybe those mm-hmm. people do have npd people mm-hmm. with npd are just unreasonably unhappy and it is mm-hmm. it is so profoundly deep and it is a huge part of their personalities and they wear they, they'll actually wear their victims out with how oh, negative you think? they are constantly <laughs> Yeah, and they use it as a tool, but it's like, again, this is what I the, the point I'm trying to make when, when people are listening to this. This isn't just a normal negative person. Like, this is a person that is unreasonably negative at a profound level at all times. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, it's on, it's, it's a part of who they are. He's reached a Zen level of covert narcissism. Um, <laughs> Sam? Exactly. So you say, you know, there's always that cliche money can't buy happiness which is understandable and true in a lot of sense but this goes beyond that meaning i don't think he's the same person from when he was making that 92 dollars or whatever nonsense he goes 98 dollars a week he (laughs) goes on about 96 dollars you know and like 77 yeah, and, when it was four hundred or the equivalent of four hundred something for part time work, not, and not bad, <laughs> but and then yeah. um, to making ninety million dollars a year. So, to but this ninety million a year, it seems like how he describes this unhappiness. I used to think maybe he's just complaining, and this is his shtick. He seems mm-hmm. more unreasonably unhappy as the years go on. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand how. Like, well, when you're, when you're, they, when you're you closeted so your entire much. life. They, well, they don't. <laughs> first off, again, and I get a lot of people's points and I get your guys' points. He's all about the money. He's all about. Yeah. He is about the money, but they don't view money the same way. Right. They view money as a tool to acquire more supply and they view money as. <clears throat> They don't, they, they view money, so we view money as we, we control our environment and that we can have food, we can have an apartment, a house. They think that money should buy me happiness. Like, they believe right. that. They believe that I have this, this is a part, of, they have a very ABC way of looking at everything, whereas, you know, someone who, who's a little bit more grounded will go, yeah, you, you cannot buy certain things. You know, when they say money doesn't buy happiness, like, you're t- talking about things that money can't buy. All those things they don't know how to acquire. They don't. It's it's a foreign language to them. Like general love, general friends, general interests. Like they're sitting here constantly in this battle of I have this money. This should be acquiring me these things, but it doesn't ever acquire those things because those are things that you can never acquire with money. The only time I've ever seen him really happy is when people who are his. I guess foes or 
people that are in his industry or someone that he perceives as an enemy is losing. He only okay. seems happy, yeah. genuinely gleeful when people mm. are down. Yeah, yeah they, the misery. They revel, they revel in the dismay of others and sadism is typically a very high um you know when you do an inventory it's it's usually a very high marking part of their personality almost universally especially with covert narcissist so in this case bob let's let me see if i can imitate the dialogue i have of wiggy in my mind going mm. all right i got this money um divorce from allison i'm gonna get i got this fuck pad in manhattan now what oh well ralph goes so get a get a mercedes limo okay he gets the limo now what uh, because it's not like bringing him happiness. All of a sudden, okay, he's with Beth. He gets Beth. Oh, um, I got Knicks tickets. Look at him in the in the front row of those Knicks games. He looks like he could be watching a brick wall for all the <laughs> for all the jo- joy it seems to give him because yeah. he knows nothing about basketball. Doesn't care. Well, let's mm-hmm. get him. Uh, you know, let's get the fucking Buckingham Palace in Florida. Okay, we get that. Fifty five million sold. Now what? Mm-hmm. It sounds to me that it's always like you're reaching you for something. You are so right. You're buying stuff for the purposes of, like there's a David Lee Roth quote that I love. Uh, you just said it, uh, start the first part of it, Sam. Um, money doesn't buy you happiness, but it does buy you a big fucking yacht so you can park up along the next side of happiness. And um, mm-hmm. I mean, you should at some point be able to, even if, let's, because he's obviously not given, get, getting money, getting um, joy out of having stuff. But it sounds like he's not happy with giving anything either. So it's not like he's giving charity to someone and that makes him feel better or he's helping someone along. It, it just sounds like a bottomless pit of fucking nothingness. It's, so it's depressing. If, if you look at, let's say, um, um, the spectrum, spectrum disorders, what, what you'll see with a lot of people that have that. Do you want me to wait right now? What's that? No, 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 keep going. No, it's okay. all right. So if you look at people with spectrum disorders, um, which is an area that I've spent a lot of time studying as well, um, <clears throat> they will often say, even in the most functional, like Asperger's syndrome, they will say, I feel like everyone in the room has a script that I don't mm-hmm. have. They feel mm-hmm. lost when it comes to social interactions. Mm-hmm. In many ways, what narcissistic personality disorder at least borrows from that and why some people think it's actually on the spectrum is that they want to be like people who have Asperger's and I'm I'm not trying to offend. I actually try to help a lot of people with that. It's a condition that I've um, spent a lot of time studying. Um, Mm -hmm. They'll say, they'll look at someone who's let's say normal and normal is a big term, you know, but, Uh, let's just say generalities, people that have healthy relationships with friends or people that have healthy romantic lives, things of that nature. Um, Mm -hmm. They'll see it almost like you're watching animals on the discovery channel and go, Oh, okay. So they have that. And that, that's what, like they went on a cruise. Let's Mm -hmm. say he sees a couple go on a cruise. So I need to go on a cruise. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they go on the cruise, but they don't understand that so much more goes into that emotionally. It wasn't just the, the money. If anything, the money was the last aspect of, of what really facilitated that couple going on a cruise. Right. You know what I mean? So it's almost like they watch everything like we're all in this cage and they're trying yeah. to mimic what we're doing through money but right. because they want to be normal. Mm-hmm. Howard wants to be normal. He mm-hmm. he resents Gary's normalcy. He he did this handsome hung Howard bit that I've heard a couple times. His oh, yeah. ex, his most extravagant things, and and when we're talking about comedy, we're talking about exaggerations. His most extravagant ideas were just neurotypical things, like taking your wife to Europe, yeah. or just having a well-adjusted family, like. Mm-hmm. That was his craziest fantasy at that moment. You could see how much they want that normalcy, but they just well, don't know how to do it. Well, two things. First of all, it makes it makes it, every time over the years since he's been divorced, when he mentions about how he went to therapy to be a better father, he mm-hmm. mentions it so often that it's just a talking point, but it sounds to me like 
the mere fact that he mentions it so often means that he really was when we know it. But we know with a so with 99.9% certainty that he was an absentee shithead father. Mm-hmm. It means that he must have been worse than even he says. It must be mm-hmm. worse than we think. He must mm-hmm. have been even, you know, as we heard, verbally abusive to Allison within the house. And probably mm-hmm. the ranting and raving that went on, like him saying, turn out the lights, who pays for this shit? But beyond what normal dads might do and growing up, it was the same thing. Don't leave the water running. Turn the lights yeah. off when you, you know, I, I, that's, but this different scale when you're making millions of dollars. Right. But here's my here's my question. Sure. For example, let's use a let's use his photography thing, which was you know maybe after you tuned out and and just a, well at, a couple years after I tuned out, <laughs> 2012 or so, he took up mm-hmm. photography. Mm-hmm. But he had he couldn't just take up photography and learn the way a normal person would by making you know taking shitty pictures. He had to go in and make get, learn Photoshop to fix his fuck ups, and in mm. doing so, didn't learn Photoshop properly. He fucked up every photo. He overused it. He used the cloning tool. And he, there's mm. examples online, guys, of photographs that he's used. And mm. just uh, Sam, we're talking about his photography, his failed ventures into photography and how he couldn't wait the normal amount of time to become a good photographer if he was ever going to. He had to rush things because he oh, clearly what do you saw. Mean? It's, he, it's brilliant when he chops <laughs> off a foot or a dog's paw. But and blurs of face it. to look like it's. <laughs> Slim slurs of face to look like it's gack. So so basically he saw other people, I think maybe even gotten jealous of his sister who's actually a, a professional photographer. Mm. And said, I want to try this too. I want to be good at it. And the problem is always he's never been good at anything except okay. bullshitting. Well if if I could again, since I this is coming on the back of my other point <clears throat> to dovetail this in again, the the way that they view people because they're sort of missing that the script analogy that I um, described that you see with um, people often describe who are on the spectrum. So it's almost like they're watching everybody in a cage, right? And they're mm-hmm. they're watching normal behavior, what they're perceiving as normal behavior, what they're told is normal behavior. And so <clears throat> when they see people with hobbies they basically try to emulate what they're doing Mm -hmm. and they don't actually have an interest. So it's almost like if, if someone, if I lived with you, um, Phil Moore, let's say you played tennis or something. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be like, I'm sort of almost like an alien and I'm like, I want normalcy and I see he plays tennis, so I'm going to emulate what he does, but I don't have a genuine interest in it. Because when yeah. people have a genuine interest in it, they, they derive it on their own. You know, here we go back to Howard. I didn't have a role model that showed me basketball. Right. Or, um, you know, I, I need a to lot grill. of people in, in the interest that don't have a male role model that shows them that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's almost like he said this thing. I, I also heard it on another thing, uh, another recent show you guys did, where he was talking about guitars, and he was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I just figured it'd either be guitar or it would be photography." And I couldn't get a hold of guitar, so I just decided, "Fuck it." He's like, "Fuck guitar," because he had to put it down because he couldn't. He can't do it, it. it, right? So, so that's what they'll do. They'll devalue and discard it, and it's like someone who genuinely wants to learn guitar or or no actually at that point he was talking about painting Mm -hmm. um what's interesting parents fault it's his parents fault he wasn't a painter everything's everything's been in race fault someone else either that or the the male role model that didn't exist whatever um here we have painting which is really open to interpretation if someone can't play guitar you can know they can't fucking play guitar so that's probably why he abandoned that but it was like he just sat down sort of like an alien and was like oh i see them doing that behavior i need to emulate that behavior and they don't actually have anything behind it any passion or really want to learn these things it's just sort of emulation behavior so I got a question for both of you guys. Do you figure that it was a, simply a matter of Ben 
giving Howard all these chances to do stuff and him fucking everything up that he gave up and just said, fuck it, I don't want to do it anymore. And Ben kind of said, well, I'm not pushing you. Here's your option. You can do this. Like the karate that they took him to karate class. And after 10 minutes, he said, I'm not doing that. That's the way Ray explained. And they left. They just took off. He, mm-hmm. he, it's just a matter of he's so useless and his parents figured, well, he's clearly useless at this. So why bother pushing him at something he has no interest in? And he's not going to, he doesn't want to develop. So is it low self-esteem, low ability? I don't know. Sam? So I think that he actually requested those karate lessons and he played piano. So he requested music lessons. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think because of his laziness, he just disregarded the lessons. And Mm -hmm. because Ben's probably... um, not cheap, but just cognizant. Just pra- pra- like, yeah, yeah like pragmatic, I'm just not... pragmatic. What a waste of lessons, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, if this person isn't going to really try or practice or take pride in what he's doing or try to hone in his skill, I'm not going yeah. to pay for this. Right. Yeah. I think and it's so it... a, a lack of passion. Yes. These, these people don't have passion for anything. Right. Anything at mm-hmm. all. Right. So let's go into it because we only did a minute and a half. Because, you know, it, I, that's why I go. So I'm kind of afraid to give it up. But I, at the same point, I'm starting to lose faith that I'm really going to change. Oh, stop it. And then is it all worth it? And the, You know who has the key to your change? My mother. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> come on, I know you can oh. get this one. Who's the... Okay, let's give, it, let's give it another go. Hold on. Key. You. Oh, well, I could have never have gotten that. <laughs> Don't ask me that. I never would have guessed that person in years. I was like, who? And that's the source of my problem. I always think somebody else holds the key. Right. You think there's some magic out there. You hit it right on the head. You'd be a good therapist. You always you always tag me. Yeah. I see Bob nodding and it's like your head was going to crack. Hmm. Yeah. Bob's like take... not Bob's nodding like it's a fucking Tupac song. <laughs> <laughs> Me it's, against the world. <laughs> it's they they I can't even articulate it to your guys' audience. Like they don't want responsibility for right. anything. And I when I say anything, I mean fucking anything. Oh, as, we as, know. As, as we the audience as, should right? know. They shouldn't know, but you don't really know it until you see it. And you're like, right. man, are you fucking serious? Like, the just basic things that we all take responsibility for every day that, that you're not even conscious of. Yeah. They don't. He's not like, I was he's responsible even, for not hot basic. water, Bob. Hot water. Oh, he I'm, can't I'm aware. Boil it. I don't doubt it. So, so in this case, let's say, let's say for example, Bob, the stumbling block to me would appear to be. Because he, because of the covert narcissism, it's I don't know if it's a chicken or egg thing, but well, for whatever reason, he can't the he can't go into a, a psychologist or a, a psychiatrist's office and say, "I've got a problem, I need to fix it," because inherently he doesn't believe he has a problem, or mm-hmm. like that the fault the false self would dictate, "No, you don't have a problem. That's everybody else's problem." So why do I, would, I have to change? I would say. Uh, actually, to be honest, I would say the opposite. I would okay. say he knows he has a problem. Okay. And he has a very specific problem that he can very easily defraud or get defrauded. Mm-hmm. And so whoever this person is that he has put this trust in is a very unique scenario that I don't think he's going to afford to many other um, professionals. Okay. Would be my take. Okay. Let's continue. There's only a bit left of that one. And I make the point, Howard, that I, I, I hear what you're saying and you're feeling that way, but that's you in your mind by yourself. You could be in this relationship with Beth and just go into it. And if there really are problems between you and Beth, which is your primary focus personally. No, that's not then, my primary then focus. Then go into. No, but there I, will be problems I mean, I between me and Beth if I'm it'll not get all, It'll all go bad. Yeah, believe me. I've seen it happen before. <laughs> it, it just seems to go bad. So. <laughs> okay. so there's only about a minute left of this, so I'll try to get through it all. Uh, Sam, did you want to say something? So if he's already predicting these problems that are going to go bad, he's seen this before. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. If you if you know a car crash is coming and you know it's probably best not to turn left when a car's flying towards you, why aren't you preventing it? Good question. Because he's addicted to the abuse and he knows that his abuse is causing these problems. Wow. That's he's nice. not gonna he's not gonna he's not gonna stop. He knows that Am- he's causing it. Amazing cycle. And and so yeah, yeah wow. that just me that answer just gave me like chills to yeah. be honest with you. <laughs> was, Holy was fuck. A, was, that was an I Luke, I'm your father moment. Oh so well, maybe well, let me ask you this. If if Beth said uh Howard, I think we're having problems. Do you want to go into counsel uh, uh marriage ca- uh, counseling or couples counseling, would you say yes or no? Sure, yeah, I would say yes. Well, then that's you handling the problems that are really going on. Well, he'd much prefer, though, that never to have to get to that point. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't you be preventive? Well, we were talking about getting married in the fall, you know, actually doing it. And I, and I still think we should go to some sort of couples counseling beforehand mm-hmm. because I do think there are things that we, that we don't talk about. Well, now you're going to be like those people that you make fun of. Yeah. Who oh, go to counseling yeah, before everything. anything happens? Oh yes, like the the Courtney Coxes. Yes, you know you've laughed uh, uh, in what's his name's face. Yeah, about I laughed the in David Arquette's face, <laughs> and you know what? He's right. He can come on the show and laugh in my face <laughs> <laughs> because I I think he's right. I want to make sure I'm not uh, fucking someone's life up. Now. Hmm. That's a that's okay. That's the end of that clip, and and uh, they I think this now that I think about it, this might have predated the uh, Ablo thing. Actually, you know what? I'm sure it isn't because that was 2007. I think Ablo came in, so this was afterwards. So they never did couples counseling bullshit. And hmm. you're right, Bob. He didn't want to ruin the narrative after that Ablo thing. They got totally exposed on unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't want that any further unearthing of uh, his own bullshit. Why mangle the truth? Why mangle the fake truth? <laughs> exactly. He so just said, this... I want to make sure I don't ruin somebody else's life. So he right. knows that he's the problem. Who okay. goes into a marriage thinking, I don't want to ruin their life? Hmm. <laughs> you might want to think about that. You want to think w- about that when you marry me? No, uh, I, I might play... ruin their life. <laughs> I mean, I what play the this... fuck? Uh, this next clip, uh, just give me a moment, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be called, um, uh, uh, hold on, let's see what I got here. I'll I edit this out too. No, Jay Thomas on Beth. <laughs> Jay Thomas always had a great take on him and Beth whenever he would start talking about his relationship. It's a real short clip. I don't know. Because she left for a month, so I'm like, kind of like, you know what? Maybe she, you know, in some <laughs> level, she was kind of like, I need uh, to get away from a little, this guy. Little space. Because well, in the she beginning doesn't of the need you as much as you need her. That's right. Because you, every five minutes, you say she's out of town. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I need her. She doesn't need me that much. So when you're just sitting around watching TV, does she just stare at you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love Jay Thomas. Rest in peace. It shouldn't have been. Should have been you still sticking around, getting those millions, dude. Um, God, so true. I love him so much. He's fucking hilarious. By the he, way, for our fans, yeah. any YouTube clips you want to look up with Jay Thomas in on the Howard Stern show or talking about it, it's just amazingly honest, priceless, non PC, amazing. Oh, yeah. He would. He went after his wig constantly. He, he, he called it his hair. He goes, and, and, and he goes. You think it's too long? Yeah. <laughs> and he started brought up Gino Vanelli, which is a Canadian singer who had the exact same fucking hair, and he kept it as an adult, like as as a, as, a, as an older man. And it's like it's not befitting, dude. Whether it's natural or not, just just you lose the uh, look. Actually, Opie went after him, Howard, this week on Twitter. He goes, yeah, every. Uh, during COVID, everyone's hair is getting long. He goes, except for Howard's. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So this is another one. This is this is a a, a, a clip about his uh, her her book. I think it was Oh My Dog, which would have been 2010, if I'm not mistaken, and oh. uh, and about charity. And I think it's so telling as to his true nature. So I, that's why I really wanted to play it. Which, you know, I wish he wouldn't write a book, honestly. Oh, stop. Uh, I really do. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really, I mean, it doesn't do me much good. It doesn't do you much She's good. She's talking about donating most of the, pro- or some of the profits to charity. And well, what the fuck would you do that for? Uh, I, it's unbelievable. After She's... all this hard work. Yeah, I mean, you're going you're gonna to make me crazy, and you're going to donate the profits to charity or some of the profits? I don't know what the deal is. She's I don't a better person to... than me. Yeah, all right, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's his real feelings on charity. First of all, guys, that's if any of you assholes out there that still think, how do you know he didn't give to Scott the engineer? How do you know he didn't give? Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> guys, so basically, he's saying, so all the non kill shelters that he's against because he supports the North Shore Animal League, this right. book was supporting the non-kill shelter, supposedly North An- Shore Animal League. So yeah. basically what he's saying is, walk to your ovens, animals, because <laughs> I don't support your charity. March take your, on, whole, t- take your three legs. puppies and kitties in your the eyeballs. Is, Peace what, out. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. What's in it for me, like, right off the top? I don't get. I don't get what she's getting out. Of, and what he's saying is, I don't get what I get out of it. How she's <laughs> me. Why I'm not. I'm not getting anything. That's all he's saying right there. It's like her. Her existence is to serve me. I'm paying for. Her. I don't get anything out of a book. Why is she doing this? Her ex- this entire existence should be to serve me. Okay. This next one is a short clip as well. It's under under a half a minute. So it's called Talking Shit About Beth's Homecoming Reunion, which from uh oh, July of July of two thousand ten. Remember this. Okay, it's July <laughs> it suddenly becomes about him. This is a love tale. Well she's going to her high school reunion this weekend. So wow. I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that just that would, just, that would just make Sam laugh. Can we clip that for the beginning? I'm alone. <laughs> She's going to do something. So me, right? So me. Yeah, right. She's going right. to her high school reunion. She's really proud of me. No, that's not what happened. She's going to her high school reunion. Wow. I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a moment. I'm going to restart that. Hold on. Well, she's going to her high school reunion this weekend. Wow. I'm alone. Well, she was the homecoming queen, wasn't she? She was the homecoming. And then she showed me the outfit she's wearing to the uh, reunion. Mm -hmm. And you're not going? You're not going? No, she doesn't want me to go. She goes, I'm (laughs) going to spare you that. And I, I said, well, thank you. Seriously, she doesn't want me going. I think because it's like, you know, it's her thing. It's her high school. And now I didn't, I didn't, tr- I truncated it because the rest of it, it, that, it, he starts to go in this rant about how he hated high school and it was miserable for him. And that's yeah. why, you know, you know, why would I go to hers? You know, but it, there's nothing in it about, yeah, I'd love to escort her to her high school, whatever. He doesn't want to go to Pittsburgh. She knows that she doesn't want him there because he looks like an ugly fucking stork with, uh, with rickets would want lurch. <laughs> <laughs> escorting them to their homecoming. You know what I mean? You want a fucking <laughs> You called him You want Herman I... Munster when you're fucking Marilyn? I don't think so. In the last show you called him a prey mantis. I, I totally missed that. That is really fucking funny, but um Yeah, so what what was his issue with her dress? So he kind of started to bring it up he's like yeah i saw what she was wearing oh so it, was what? Just, it was so hot it was some i uh, just got pumped by the gym teacher you know in the in the in the cubicles you know looking dress right so he, so he's obviously what happy that? she's not going she doesn't he he doesn't want her to go he's not happy no. that she's going no. he doesn't want all. her to, he doesn't want her to take out he wants her to take out the trash but he do, wants her doesn't want her physically to leave the house to do it go ahead sam bob what is that about because this is a pattern with him he (laughs) comments on her outfits like for approval right or disapproval or her outfits somehow they they have some his commentary on her outfits or how he feels about them is some sort of i don't know solidification or some sort of uh, transfer of acceptance in the relationship, which I don't understand. Like when he says, and this is not just the only time he does this. I wow. saw what she was wearing, or did you see what Beth was wearing? Or, oh, uh, yeah, she was wearing that. Or why is her outfit and his approval, disapproval, or bringing it up? What does that have to do with anything? Why is that a constant? influx with those two it's a seed it's him saying it's him implying i believe you're going out to cheat 
<laughs> what he's saying. Really? I see your outfit. I think that you're sending a certain message when you go out, and I'm going to be keeping an eye on you. I'm going to be checking on you. Like, he's just saying, before you even leave, I'm just trusting what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So just know that. Like, don't well, feel like you can do whatever you're going to do. I, I hold, just trust whatever you're doing. Hold, hold so, on. She, so you're saying that when she said, when he said right now, well, yeah, I'm glad she spared me that I saw her outfit. That saying, I approve of what up. she's she, wearing to go to Pittsburgh for her reunion. No, I like, I don't think a, she, no, I mean, I mean, she, he's saying, I don't think she's going to fuck around or I do think she's going to fuck around. Is I that the message he's I think he's implying that there's something nefarious going on when he's saying that. I've seen the outfit. She's up to something. Okay. The, I saw the outfit that she was doing. She's up to something. It's like she, he's sort of castigating her before she even leaves. Like he's just setting a narrative before she even goes. Go ahead. One sec, Sam. I wanted to say this. Do you think, could it, could it be possibly, Bob, and this is a guy's word, it's all conjecture, obviously, the whole fucking show is conjecture, but um, mm -hmm. could it simply be Beth going, I want, I just want a little approval of what I'm wearing to say that I'm, that I look good, and that's why she just wants to look as good as possible, and that's no. the whole motivation for her, what he gets out of it is a whole other matter, you don't think so? You think she, no. she's doing this to like, look at what you're missing, asshole? No, no, I don't, I don't think she's wearing, she, I don't think she's wearing... I think that she doesn't want Howard a part of at all of what she's wearing. Like, right. I don't think that she views what she's wearing as bizarre or unusual or implying anything. I think that she's just trying to do her own thing here and whatever concept she has of herself. I think it's Howard that's, that's reading into this and mm -hmm. sort of casting this shadow. And, yeah. Sam? We... We see this when he talks with Greg Fitzsimmons on the show mm -hmm. and Beth goes to a movie premiere. This is when Artie was still on the show, too, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Beth goes to a movie premiere. He she went to an after party that he didn't she didn't tell Howard about. Mm -hmm. So then Greg says, oh, I saw her in a in an online article and this and that so howard said wait let me see pull that up and he pulls up the outfit in front of everyone and he's like oh i don't and he calls her mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't remember this <laughs> yeah he calls her on the show and he goes oh you look very you know you you said after party I, I, and you didn't come home till and he talked and they have an argument about it i should have told you about this for this episode but this does happen and probably doesn't even exist anymore on youtube but i specifically remember this because greg's like trying to diffuse the situation and he said oh um you know i want my wife to dress more sexy and beth goes oh well, i'll take your wife shopping anytime right um, right let's, let's i want her to <laughs> dress more like you because everyone in the room was like Whoa! With yeah. The outfit. Oh, wow. Now that you mention this, I got to check this out because I don't remember that at all. And I, I used to, I, I used to get all of Fitzsimmons' uh, appearances Everyone anyway. Because like, was... whoa, with the outfit. Mm -hmm. And she goes, you, you know, I go to that movie. You know, I go to that movie screening, uh, guild thing or whatever the fuck she's yeah, part yeah. of. And this, yeah. this is the only thing I like to do. And he goes, I didn't know about the after party. And she's like, um. I you know, like just stammering. Yeah. And it looked bad. Well, it basically, the impl implication was she didn't want him there. Like she wanted yeah, to and just, yeah. She didn't know what she, she was didn't. wearing. Yeah. Well, how much of that could be just simply, look, he's a miserable fuck. I want to stay longer. Yeah. If he comes along, I got to leave. It's not even, a, I'm going to go and fuck around on him, which probably that's happens it, anyway. That's it's more exactly like, I just, what that was. Exactly. So why tell him about something he's going to complain about? and not go to, and then complain about me going, so why not just go, have the good time, and deal with the bullshit, because that's at least, that. then I don't have to leave, <laughs> I don't have the pre-enduring bullshit, I can just have the post. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly yeah. what that was. I think and that's Greg, what that was. And Greg Fitzsimmons, in the clip, you could hear it, was like, oh, I wish my wife dressed more like Beth, and she was like immediately like, oh, I can take her shopping. Um, She's like, like thanks, she for the, just... thanks for the out, Greg. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was I'll bad. Have check, I'll have to check that one out. Um, this next one is called uh, Passive Aggressive Wig on Getting More Cats. And this is uh, also uh, after post Artie. Howard, good morning. Pleasure to talk with you. I saw Beth this morning on Fox and Friends, and uh, she did an interview with the uh, North Shore Animal League. She looked great, by the way. In- incidentally, she mentioned you guys were getting a cat. I was wondering uh, if you uh, were aware of that. Honey, you want to address that? Um, this is news to Howard, and yes, honey, we are getting a cat, maybe two. Uh, uh, I mean, great. <laughs> you know what? I don't think it's the right time, because... What's the right time? I'll be honest with you. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Sam. You wanted to say something before we continue? Yep. Um, I know this is right in the beginning, but I truly think when she says, honey, you don't know this, we're getting a cat. I think that there's some part of Beth that really wanted to be a mom. Oh, yeah. And I really think this is her fuck you for Mm -hmm. not getting me. Melania Trump got a baby. We're the fuck. What are you doing? I don't get to be a mom. She Uh, won't even (laughs) announce her own step grandchild's kids birth and neither will howard these people right. are such piles of shit well it, yeah and, and someone might argue okay they don't want their the, the, the kids don't want like deborah doesn't want um the kid no uh, they posted it it's on it's his ex-wife's that. social media well, account grandpa. it's on deborah's social media account it's right. on her sister's social media account everyone's happy about the new baby but social media is one thing and then his show is a completely other separate medium. You know what I mean? So like, I mean, it's not like Deborah reaches, well, it's not like he reaches that many people either. So maybe one might argue that you'll get more people on Instagram than if we listen to Howard's show, but uh, maybe they have an agreement with him. You're not going to talk about it. And he's more than happy not to talk about the kid, but I believe like you believe he, he just doesn't want to fucking uh, acknowledge the fact that he's a grandfather. Oh, and I think that Beth is so jealous. Resentful. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And that's another because that's so another tear. Resentful. That's another tear in the fucking will. Like that's another that's an addition in the will if there is anything. But this is what I think. Um, you're right. The the cats were a big fuck you, and now he's had to live with it. Maybe he likes the cats. I don't. I doubt it. I think every one of those token shots of him brushing a cat or whatever is strictly. I need this for Instagram. Can you do this for me? And I'll you know. Okay, yeah, great. I'll do it. But um, there's a. Remember the clip I. Did I play it in the last? It was in the last intro. I didn't sh- put it in the show, but Artie's doing the grandma. Yeah, he, he's doing the bath impression on the oh, microphone. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, at least I don't have to pretend like my, my dog is really a child. <laughs> oh, it's the best. And also, too, this Beth stuff with her Instagram and how if Beth was only posting, I'd say, once in a while, she averages about 14 posts on Instagram a day. She's crazy nuts i yeah. crazy with the cats in the posting yep. so i truly think this is the beginning of here you go guys this is what happens when you don't impregnate your wife because you're gay mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i've learned in therapy that when you're in a marriage I've, I've said this before but i'll say it in front of about when you're in a marriage you have to you know recognize that the other person has you know, their wants and desires yeah, there and dreams. There has to be room for both. I learned oh. that in therapy. <laughs> what was he dating? A me, fucking it log? Me, it took me 40 years to figure that out. Oh my and God. then I, I got divorced. Dating, I was dating a fucking tree branch. I mean, what is he talking about? <laughs> I love that. I learned in therapy. It's like, you know, but kindergarten report cards are so basic. It's like, you know, you learn to tie your shoes in kindergarten. You learn to um, do certain things, basic forms of the alphabet. I can imagine his psychiatrist grades him like a kindergarten uh, report. He gets stars. Star stickers. <laughs> he learned, he learned he how to wipe. stamps on his hand. <laughs> Here you go. You made it for the day. He yes. gave you a fucking stamp. Ink what? Good job. He, he didn't Man, drink the were, fluoride. You were talking about, I think this is the guy that was stuck at $49 a week or whatever. Yeah. I think I think Howard is 16. Like, I think he's all the way back there still. Oh, like, he's, I think he's, he's back to the original where the trauma set in. Like, he's not even an adult. Oh, he's he's been at age 13. He's been a teen for the, for the last 
50 years. Like there's yeah. no, he never grew past a certain, even Robin, when she was doing the promo for her book, I believe it was, uh, in an interview, I, I know I have the abstract somewhere and she says, I don't think it's immature. I don't think it's, um, whatever his, his behavior is so much, um, shocking as it is a guy uh, who never, reg- he never matured past a certain age. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what it is. Yeah. Sam. I think in a bigger picture too, this is a lot of celebrity culture that is now being kind of like detested because we don't like people who have been in this state of no responsibility, no answers. You don't even know how the real world, real world works to the point where you need to be, you need hot water boiled for you. You can't vacuum. You can't yeah. dust. You mm-hmm. can't walk downstairs. I mean, and this goes beyond just Howard. So I think more people are resonating with comics and podcasters like say Joe Rogan, for example, because these are real people Hmm. who do things for themselves and the Mm -hmm. amount of handicapping that has gone on in celebrity culture. And Howard is the top echelon of incapability is just highlighted in all of the relationships. Yeah, I am. You are on your ankles. Huh? You feeling pressure on your ankles, you fat fuck? Baby, what? Shut up, you junkie. Fuck off. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, let's you let's not get into that. Uh, fuck her, Howard. No, no this is bullshit. You. Fuck you. I'm sick I'm of not, her I'm uh, insults. I'm not beat a juice. I will, I will cut you down. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Try it. You're a fat junkie. Fat fuck. You're a fat junkie. Crazy you bitch.